Navigating Cultural Differences in Organizational Change, presented by the Enterprise Agility University and written by Eric R. Buhler. Get ready to take control of your future with our world-class Enterprise Agility training. Visit courses.eau.university to take your career beyond Agile and Scrum. Enterprise Agility University, the place where science meets organizational change. In all my years as a change consultant, I've worked with companies in Asia, North and South America and Europe. In all that time, I've noticed several differences when it comes to addressing problems in organizations in these regions. I'll start with the obvious ones. First, cultural differences. Companies in different regions have their own cultural norms and values that can have a significant impact on communication styles, decision-making processes, and problem-solving approaches. As a change consultant, it's important not to rush into proposing solutions without a thorough understanding of these cultural differences. Adapting to and respecting these unique aspects is critical to success. Second, hierarchical structures. Asian companies tend to have more hierarchical structures, while American and European companies tend to have flatter organizations. This has implications for information flow, decision making, and problem solving, but also for the adoption of certain practices such as scrum and team voting, which might be perceived as too Western. Third, risk tolerance. American and European companies are more willing to take risks, while Asian and Latin American companies are generally more risk averse. This difference affects how problems are identified and solutions implemented. Fourth, time orientation. Western companies generally value short-term results and efficiency, while Asian companies often value long-term relationships and stability. This difference can affect how quickly problems are addressed and resolved inside and outside the teams. Fifth, communication styles. In some regions, such as Asia, indirect communication is more common, while in the Americas and Europe, direct communication is preferred. Also, some countries, such as Spain, Portugal, Colombia, or even India have difficulty saying no and prefer to delay it. Understanding these styles is critical to effective problem solving. Sixth, leadership styles. Asian companies often have a more paternalistic leadership style, while American and European companies are more democratic. This can affect how problems are handled and how to deal with change. This is important to understand if you're working in the area of organizational change and want to take the company in a different direction. Seventh, decision-making processes. Western companies tend to take a more individualistic approach to decision-making, while Asian and Latin American companies prefer a collective approach and therefore expect people not to make a decision only when the entire team can decide. This can affect how problems are identified, discussed, and resolved. Eighth, teams evaluation. Companies in the Americas and Europe often emphasize teamwork and collaboration to evaluate a person, while Asian companies tend to focus on individual performance. This can affect how problems are addressed and the dynamics within the team. Ninth, innovation and change. Western companies generally place more emphasis on innovation and change, which can lead to more pressure to change and adapt. In contrast, Asian and Latin American companies prefer more traditional approaches and require more time and evaluation to adopt new solutions. 
Tenth, external factors. Different regions have unique economic, political, and legal environments that can affect the way companies operate and approach problems. Understanding these factors is important so that a change consultant can provide tailored solutions that are effective and sustainable. I hope you find this information valuable. They come from a small book on cultural differences that I've been building over several years. When I need to help a client in a country I've never visited, I always check the Hofstede website and use their power distance tool. Hofstede's theory of cultural dimensions is a valuable resource for understanding the differences between different cultures. Their free tool allows you to compare your culture to another and help you understand how you should behave or interact with people in the new place. Even though this is not a scientific perspective, I hope you found it useful. Navigating Cultural Differences in Organizational Change was presented by the Enterprise Agility University and written by Eric R. Buhler. Get ready to take control of your future with our world-class Enterprise Agility training. Visit courses.eau.university to take your career beyond Agile and Scrum. Enterprise Agility University, the place where science meets organizational change